There's something in the Amplified Bible that's said a lot in Psalm 119, which if you've never studied Psalm 119, I want to give you a homework assignment. It's 166 verses. It's the longest book of the Bible. And it is all about the power of God's Word. The entire Psalm, all 166 verses, is about the power that's in God's Word. It is an awesome piece of Bible literature that will just encourage us and teach us. And so one of the things that Psalm 119 says, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. You see that at the very last, the amplification? So he said, this is what I did with the word. I heard it, I received it, I loved it, and I obeyed it. I love that. The phrase, hearing, loving, receiving, and obeying it, is found 17 times in the Psalms, and 15 of them are in Psalm 119. Wow. Read, study Psalm 119. How many of you will do that? I mean, you're just gonna love it. Study Psalm 119. And if it takes you a week, I don't care. But study it and really think about what it's saying. It just shows us the value of the Word of God. Now back to James 1, 21. So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, <laughs> receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, obey the message and not mere listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word and doesn't obey it, being a doer of it, he's like a man who looks carefully at his own self, natural face in a mirror, for he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law of liberty and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he will be blessed in his life of doing, he will be blessed in his life of obedience. Now, hearing the word is great, but our lives are not blessed from hearing it. <laughs> our lives are blessed from doing it, amen? We need to be doers of the word of God. And he says a very interesting thing here, he says if we're not doers of the word, it's because we reason out some way in our mind that even though we agree that it's true, that it's okay for us not to do it. And one of the excuses that people use is it's just too hard. I'm just not ready for that yet. Or you take giving. The largest majority of Christians don't tithe and the Bible's clear about it. You say, well, wait a minute, that's Old Testament. Well. I got it. You want to hear my answer for that? I've got a great answer for that. How many of you want to hear my answer? You're, go you're going to anyway, but I just... <laughs> if, they could, if you think tithing is Old Testament law, if they could give 10% under the law, I wonder what we should be doing by grace. I <laughs> see you're afraid to clap for the thoughts of giving away 10% of your money. But God's letting you keep 90%. Yeah. We wouldn't have anything if God didn't give us what we have. We would have absolutely nothing. Well, why should I do that? Bless God, you got a better car than me. And, you know, you, 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 you. <laughs> well, first of all, don't look at it like you're giving to people. Give it to God. Yes. Give it to God and expect God to bring a reward in your life. Now, I, you know, I'm not going to harp on tithing and giving because I don't. I don't feel like it, and maybe you don't either. But the thing, the point is, is that it doesn't matter what I think about it. If God says it, and it's clear, and I can see it, and I don't do it, then I'm not doing it because some way in my mind, I've figured out a reason why it's okay for me not to do it. Well, maybe you got a reason, but you missed the blessing. Oh, come on. Now, you know why people act like that? Because they don't want to give their money away. How many of you know you cannot outgive God? You just absolutely cannot outgive God. I mean, that's just the bottom line. God is a giver and you cannot outgive him. But there's many, many, many 
other things that the Bible talks about. And if we will get very serious about obeying the word, then our lives are going to change dramatically, absolutely phenomenally dramatically. We need to meditate on the word of God. To meditate on the word means to roll it over and over and over in your mind, to mutter it under your breath, to think about it. In other words, I put down here, preach to yourself. <laughs> Do you know, I'm really on fire about these messages because I've already preached these to myself several times. I mean, I was up this morning at six o'clock preaching to myself. While I was doing my hair, I was preaching to myself. Well, see, by the time I get here, I open my mouth and it just rolls out because I've been preaching to myself. Well, if you preach to yourself more in your quiet time and private time, when you get out around people, you're going to behave a whole lot better than what you would have if you spend your morning thinking about who all you're mad at. How many of you have ever told your kid is now... Make sure you chew your food. Don't swallow that whole. Chew your food. Chew that better. Well, when we meditate on the word, it's equivalent to chewing it. And when you chew your food, that's how you get all the nutrients out of it. If you swallow it whole and don't chew it, then there's vitamins and life-giving nutrients in it that you don't even get. It actually can give you indigestion and a tummy ache if you don't chew it. And so meditating on the word, it's like it's not good enough to show up in a building and sit there and, and kind of halfway sort of maybe a little listen to what's being said. No, we need to focus. We need to have a humble attitude. We need to be hungry for the word. We need to believe there's power in this. I don't want to miss any of it. It's working in me right now. This word is healing me. I believe that people, when they sit under the word, can be healed of sickness and disease if they'll release their faith and believe that there's power in the word. There is power in the word. Meditate on the word of God. John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will know the truth, the truth will make you free. And the word abide means to live, dwell, and remain in you. Now, the word of God is truth. How many of you agree with that? Okay, now let's, let's talk for a minute about some of the stuff going on in the world today. Is there any absolute truth? <laughs> well, of course there is. I mean, if there's absolutely, if there's no absolute truth, we have all got a really, really, really huge problem. I mean, I, I trust that gravity is always going to be there. And you say, well, I don't believe in gravity. Well, <laughs> doesn't matter whether you do or not, it's not going to go away. Well, see, people who say, well, I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe the Bible's true. Uh, I don't believe God's real. You know, to me, to be honest, it would take more faith to be an atheist than it would to be a Christian. I mean, how can you, how can you just believe that some little bug crawled up somewhere on a beach jillions of years ago and, boop, here we are, and... You know, we used to be apes and monkeys, and the thing that I don't understand is what happened to all the ones that didn't evolve? Some got left out. Because here I am now, you know, we've evolved, and we're no longer like that, but now they're, they're still there, so what happened to them? So, I, you know, I'm sorry, but I just got to go with creation. I am created by the hand of God in my mother's womb. Amen. He specially, intricately formed me with his own hand, and he has a purpose for my life, and I'm going to die happy with that knowledge. Let us ponder what happens if we buy into the humanistic idea that there's no absolute truth. Well, this view contends that a thing may be wrong for one person, but not for another. It could depend on your culture, your personal preference, or your political viewpoint. <laughs> I mean, it's really just dumb when you think about it. Therefore, we may have our own opinions of right and wrong. Well, then that leaves us with no standard to live by. Do you know how dangerous the world becomes when there's no standard and everybody just makes up their own idea of what they think is right and wrong? 
Well, that may be right for you, but it's not right for me. Listen, if it's right according to the Word of God, then it's right for all of us, whether we like it or not. We can't live with this attitude that anything goes. Whatever a person wants to do is acceptable. It's just, we need to be tolerant and just accept whatever. Well, that's a good idea, unless the serial killer's making the decision, then we might be in trouble. <laughs> that's a good idea, unless a rapist is making the decision and you're a woman out walking late at night, just because he wants to do it, that, you know. There are absolute truths. And the Word of God, excuse me, but I'm gonna die saying this and I'll shout it from the rooftops, and I'm happy to say it today on television where it's going all around the world. The Word of God is absolute truth. I believe it, I believe all of it from cover to cover. I may not totally understand all of it, but I believe it, amen? And pretty good chance that I'm happier than the people who don't believe it. There are absolute truths. I'm doing this because I love people and I want to see, I want to see God honored in the earth today. I want to help make the Lord's name famous. And I don't want to see people just keep compromising and keep compromising and keep compromising until there's no standards at all left and we're all in a lot more trouble than what we can possibly imagine. Hmm. There are a handful of things that Paul said in the Bible that were cultural issues and don't apply today, but nothing Jesus said can be looked at in that way. For example, women had to have their heads covered in church or in prayer as a sign of submission. Men were not to have their heads covered. It was a cultural issue. That's not the thing today. It was a shame for a woman to cut her hair. Women were not to wear jewelry or have fancy hairstyles because only prostitutes did that in those days. And so Paul was encouraging the women to make sure that they behaved themselves in a godly way. Women were not to speak in church, but if they had questions, they were to ask their husbands at home. Some of the comments that Paul made about women keeping quiet in the church were cultural. First of all, women were uneducated and women sat on one side of the church and men sat on the other side of the church. And when the gifts of the Spirit showed up, there was a lot of ruckus about what was going on. And if you study history, women would ask their husbands across the church a question. And Paul said, women should be quiet in the church. And if they have a question, they should ask their own husbands at home. And now because of that, half of the people out in the world say that God can't use women. Well, oops, it's too late. He is. Because you see, here's what Jesus said. There's no more male nor female, no more Jew nor Greek, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. God doesn't look at you and say, oh, I can't use you, you're a woman. <laughs> How silly is that? I'm having fun up here this morning. I'll, you can do what you want to. I'll tell you one thing. If God can't use women, then Jesus was sure confused when he came out of the tomb and he told Mary, <laughs> go and tell my disciples he is risen. First gospel message right there. Okay, we'll get off of that before I make a bunch of people mad. Now, okay, now, <laughs> you know, today people fight for their right to sin. <laughs> It's like, I have a right to live like that if I want to. Well, can I tell you something? The government doesn't need to give us that right. God already did. God will protect your right to go to hell if that's what you want to do. Because he already said, I set before you life and death, good and evil, you choose. Come on now, hang with me a minute. So we don't need people telling us we can sin. We don't need people to legalize our sin. God already said, you can do whatever you want to, but here's the deal. <laughs> if you do what I tell you to, your life is gonna be awesome, amazing, blessed. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna have joy. 
And if you don't do what I tell you to, then the ride's gonna be a little bumpy and you're not gonna be so happy and it's not gonna be so good. So we can all do anything we want to, but every decision that we make carries with it a result. Is this okay? Are you all okay with this today? Now, this is gonna be one of those messages when this goes on television, we are gonna get letters. <laughs> Woo, we get letters. Man, but they only give me the nice ones. As far as I'm concerned, everybody just loves me to pieces. That's all I think. <laughs> time to fight off all that other stuff. I'm too busy trying to help people. Yeah. Basically what I'm trying to say today is please, as a child of God, please don't buy into the nonsense that's going on in the world today. This is the truth. God means what he says. If we come to the word and we hear it, we love it, we receive it, we obey it, our lives are gonna be amazing. That doesn't mean they'll be completely trouble free, but I'll tell you one thing, I'd rather have a big problem and have Jesus in it to help me than to have a little problem and be by myself trying to solve it. God is good. Why would you not want a relationship with God? He is good and everything that he tells us not to do, it's for our benefit. Everything, God's not trying to take your toys away from you. He's trying to keep you from killing yourself. God wants us to have a good life, an amazing life. You gotta be very careful about trying to take things out of the word of God or make it say things that it doesn't say. I think that somebody needs to read this, so I'm going to right now. Revelation 22, 19, if anyone cancels or takes away from the statements of the book of this prophecy, these predictions relating to Christ's kingdom and its speedy triumph, together with the consolation and admonitions or the warnings pertaining to them, God will cancel and take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the city of holiness. So God's saying you can't, you, I don't know what in the world's gonna happen if they start trying to take stuff out of here. And I'll be honest, I'm concerned it's coming down the pike if we don't stand up and say, no, you're not gonna start taking stuff out of the Bible. That's what I believe. Amen. This is not a time for us to compromise, church. This is a time for us to say, I love this book. I love what's in it. It's full of life, it's full of health, it's full of healing, it's full of wholeness. Do you know that every answer to every problem that you could possibly have is in the Word of God. There is not a problem that you have that you can't find an answer to in God's Word. And the Bible says that if we will love the Word, hear it, receive it, and obey it, that it's gonna bring healing into our life. So many wonderful things in Psalm 119. Blessed is the man who orders his conduct and conversation according to the Word of God. You'll be so blessed that you'll be envied. <laughs> You will not wander from God's ways. Young men may cleanse their ways by conforming their life to God's ways. Living according to the word of God is a choice. We put our hope in God's word. Listen to these three scriptures. Those who reverently and worshipfully fear you will see me and be glad because I have hoped in your word. Isn't it wonderful to be able to put your hope in the, how many of you feel more hopeful since you walked in here today? Don't, don't you feel more like that God can do something amazing in your life? Okay, let me close with Ezekiel 37. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's happy. I hope you're not laughing because I said I was gonna close. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm just having fun with you. We gotta have fun, don't we? Thank you. I get myself in trouble once in a while, but I gotta say what I feel like God wants me to say. Yeah. Ezekiel 37, how many of you know that we, we, we gotta hear some straight up teaching in the days that we're living in or we are gonna just, 
I mean, I don't know what's going to happen if we just... But we got to hear it. Don't compromise. Stand strong. If you lose every friend you've got, stand strong. If you lose your job, stand strong. Don't start compromising on the Word of God. Eternity is a long time, and I want to be in the right place. How about you? The hand of the Lord was upon me. I'm in Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. <laughs> and he caused me to pass round about among them, and he said, Behold, there are very many human bones in this valley, and they were very dry. <laughs> you ever feel like that, like your life is just nothing but a bunch of dead, dry bones? And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can things really change in your life? Can your circumstances change? Can you, can you make a lot of really bad mistakes and have a new beginning? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Oh, Lord, you, you know. You're the only one that knows, God. Now get ready. And again, he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Every time that you turn the TV on and listen to my teaching or somebody else's who's really teaching the word of God, they are prophesying to the dry bones in your life. Now watch what happens. And you can do it yourself. Thus says the Lord to these bones, behold, I will call breath and spirit to enter you and you shall live. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Long story. And then it says down here, and the bones got up bone to bone, flesh and sinew came upon the bones and they stood upon their feet, a mighty host and a great army. And you know what? All of us started out as a bunch of dead, dry bones. And here we are today, a mighty host and a great army for God. Amen. All because of the power of God's word. Grab your Bible if you got one, give it a good hug. I'm gonna pray for you. Father, I pray that we would all have a greater respect for your word. I pray that we would realize what a precious treasure we have in being able to turn the television on and get the word, turn the radio on and get the word, have CDs and DVDs and books, as many books as we want to have and conferences and things where we can have the word and churches and pastors. What a wonderful privilege it is, God, that you've provided the word in so many different formats. Help us to always love your word, to receive your word, to be respectful to your word. And I believe that there's power in the Word to change our lives, to save our souls, and to help us stand upon our feet, <clears throat> a mighty host, doing great things for you. Help us not to compromise in the days that we live in, and help us to stand strong on your Word and believe it, even if we don't fully understand all of it, to believe it and say, I know that everything that God says is true. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.